This monitor here is a Gigabyte Aorus FI27QX. The exact monitor model isn't important here. What is important though is that this is a wide gamut monitor, and that is to say that the colour gamut extends well beyond the standard sRGB colour space. This one actually runs very close to Adobe RGB, which is significantly wider than sRGB. The reason this is an issue is that most content you consume is created with the sRGB colour space in mind. Whether you're browsing the internet, whether you're on the desktop as I am right now, if you're watching something on YouTube, on Netflix, you're playing a game, then most content is going to be designed with that sRGB colour space in mind. If it's viewed with a wider colour gamut than sRGB on your monitor, then it appears with extra saturation. It's a vibrant look, some people like it, but depending on how extreme the extension beyond sRGB is in the gamut, that saturation can be rather heavy and some people, either way, they don't like that. They prefer things to look more as the developers or creators intended. If you're able to profile the monitor with your own colorimeter or spectrophotometer or a similar device, then you can create an ICC profile and that will work great if the application is color managed, it's ICC aware or color aware, which means it will read that gamut information and appropriate transformations will be applied at the GPU level. But just generally, the desktop environment here on Windows, when you're playing games, you're watching videos with hardware acceleration enabled, they are not color aware applications. So what you need to do, some monitors, including this one, will have an sRGB emulation setting, which will clamp the gamut to sRGB to avoid this oversaturation. So with my monitor, it's actually called sRGB, so very clearly labeled in this case. When I enable that, you should see that the saturation of the red car there and various other elements on the screen, that's toned down. That's because it's oversaturated natively without the setting active. You won't see the exact nature of these changes, but you certainly should see that the saturation is more subdued with the sRGB setting. This setting can be called various different things on different monitors, but the issue is that not all monitors have this setting, and it often restricts the other settings that you can change. So with this monitor, for example, you can adjust the brightness, which is good. Sometimes you can't even adjust the brightness with sRGB emulation settings, but you can't adjust the color channels, you can't adjust gamma, and you can't adjust various other settings. Some monitors may have a mode that's called sRGB, but it doesn't actually apply a gamut clamp, so it's not an sRGB emulation setting anyway. If you've got an AMD GPU, there's an alternative built into the graphics driver, which is just shown on this image here. This isn't the graphics driver itself, so I'm running an NVIDIA GPU at the moment, but this shows where you'd find the setting. So you click on display there, and then you'll find towards the right of the screen, there's a setting which says custom color. Make sure that toggle is enabled, and color temperature control, this is an important one, make sure that's set to disabled. It might appear this way when you first open the driver up. It might actually not have color temperature control disabled, even though it says it does. So just enable that and then click disabled again. What this does is it is a driver level sRGB emulation setting. So it will clamp the gamut to sRGB. It does that by reading the EGID, extended display information data of the monitor. And that should contain gamut information, which it's able to read and then make appropriate corrections based on. This isn't always perfect, it depends on the monitor, but in my experience, and I've tested this with a lot of monitors, I just test it by default when I review things, it does actually work very well. But the thing with the EGID is that it isn't specific to every unit, it's just for a particular monitor model, and it isn't always entirely accurate, but it should at least give a bit of a reduction in saturation either way. NVIDIA doesn't have a similar setting in their driver, so there isn't a setting which you can toggle in the graphics driver, which will read the EGID and make corrections to the gamut at the driver level based on that. Someone who goes by the name of Dogalition or Dogalition Man on Reddit, they've created this tool which will give you similar functionality if you've got an NVIDIA GPU. The page that you'll download this from is linked to in the description of the video. It'll be this page you're linked to and you want to look at the latest version which should be at the top which is V03 at the time this video was recorded. Then you can just click on release.zip which will download a zip file containing everything you need for this toggle. You then simply extract it to a folder of your choice or destination of your choice. I've created a folder called NVIDIA sRGB emulation. What you want to run is novideo sRGB.exe or novideo underscore sRGB.exe. The first time you try and run this, it'll say Windows protected your PC. So Defender Smart Screen is screening the app out. Depending on your version of Windows, it might not look exactly like this, the message. But all you have to do is click more info or something similar and then click Run Anyway. Once you do this, it brings up this little tool and has a checkbox here that says Clamped. This means that it will apply 
the sRGB gamut clamp, so it'll give you sRGB emulation at the graphics driver level. And it does work very well on the Gigabyte Aorus FI27QX. I've also tested another wide gamut monitor and it worked very well on that. It's essentially very similar to the AMD toggle. So the functionality is excellent. And the person who created this, he did give a little bit more of a technical explanation about what he's done here, but the functionality is basically integrated into NVIDIA's GPUs and it's sort of a hidden functionality in the driver. I have no idea why NVIDIA hasn't actually added this to the driver, so there's a clear checkbox that you can activate or deactivate in the driver for this because it's a really useful feature and it does work very well. You should be able to see the saturation around the Leopard or the Jaguar there changing when this clamp's applied versus not applied. So that's sRGB, whereas this is the native gamut of the monitor, clear difference in saturation. This is a really useful tool and if you've got multiple monitors it will list them here and you select which display you want to apply this gamut clamp to. So unlike the sRGB emulation setting of my monitor, I can just use my normal settings, which would otherwise use the full native gamut of the monitor. So you don't have to set the monitor into a special mode or anything like that. You can just use its full native gamut. You have your full controls, brightness, color channels, gamma, anything else. It will work on monitors that don't even have an sRGB emulation setting as well. So it's very useful to have. If your monitor does have an sRGB emulation setting and you're happy to use that and it, it's nice and flexible, then by all means do. Technically, it can be a bit better to use sRGB emulation on the monitor itself if it offers that, because it's usually tuned for the specific unit that includes it, rather than having a setting which is just generalized based on the panel and the backlight that's used on the monitor. Nonetheless, hopefully this is useful, especially for those of you who have a monitor without an sRGB emulation setting or where the sRGB emulation setting is very restrictive and you have an NVIDIA GPU. So definitely check that tool out. Hopefully it works well for you.